uh, 2018 was the first festival and um, we decided very soon after that um, we would like to partner, partner with A Noise Within, particularly because they had just launched their Noise Now initiative, which aims to um, uh, engage with the classics in a more contemporary vein and also to uh, think about diversity in relation to the classics. And so that seemed like a perfect fit. And so we were well along the way to planning an actual festival at A Noise Within in Pasadena, um, when of course we had to change gears. And we, we went to um, this virtual mode. It was a, a long process of sort of figuring out what the theater world was doing and what kinds of avenues this would open up for us. And of course, I had to change gears from figuring out, you know, airfares and visas and things like that to suddenly thinking, who would we collaborate if we could really collaborate with anyone? Um, and at the same time, it became clear that there were certain um, artists in Spain who were particularly excited to play with the new virtual formats in relation to the classics. Um, and our, our Spanish producer, uh, Lorenzo Papagallo, was very agile in putting us in touch. And so we've really been able to be part of work that is being produced now and created for the festival. And it's been a tremendously exciting um, experience. So we're going to have in this amazingly international festival now, we're going to have companies from Malaga and Madrid, from Mexico City, um, Red Bull from New York is going to be doing a stage reading. And then of course we have um, an LA, a brand new play created, written in LA, um, and three adaptations of golden age plays by LA playwrights to think about promoting Hispanic classical theater in the English speaking world. Um, and it did have a very LA point of origin, which is that, um, you know, soon after I've moved, I'd moved here and particularly when I was thinking about uh, performance outdoors, um, when I was running the UCLA Clark Library and trying to bring performance to those spaces, I was very struck by the fact that Shakespeare seemed to occupy almost all of those outdoor performance spaces, right? And that in a city with, uh, as many as 4 million Spanish speakers, it was too bad that there was no Lope in the park or Calderon in the park alongside Shakespeare in the park. Um, and so I began thinking about um, what the factors might be um, behind that and about the role that I as a scholar could play in trying to change that situation. And so the project began with a translation workshop. Um, which is made up of faculty and grad students at UCLA. And occasionally when we're lucky, some practitioners, actors or directors who join us, um, some people from other institutions in the area. And our work has been ongoing really. And we've begun um, publishing the plays and they're also available on our website for anyone to download and use. So translating the plays has been a key component. So we translate with an eye to what we think will be most attractive to contemporary practitioners and audiences, right? Plays that are very very um, savvy and playful around gender and class and the construction of identity in urban spaces, that sort of thing. Um, and, and then at some point we decided, you know, we also needed to have our festival that we needed to have a showcase for this, for this work in LA. I mean, there are amazing similarities in the plays, right? They're, they're drawing on the same sources. They're coming out of very similar context, right? This is urban theater for a, a, a wide uh, range of audiences. I think uh, one, of the, one of the things we find when we speak to practitioners or audiences about the Spanish version is that, of course, in Spain, actresses were allowed on stage. That makes a real difference in terms of roles for women and the kinds of roles that these playwrights created. Um, and so that seems a tremendous um, uh, point of excitement, I think, for, for practitioners now when they encounter this corpus. Um, you know, nothing makes me happier than another production of Shakespeare, but I do think there's a there's an important point to be made about how to expand all the work that has been done on a diversity of who does Shakespeare, right? Who gets cast, who directs, um, what the what the sort of take is on Shakespeare, um, with a concomitant diversity in what actually gets produced. And so whether it is pairing Shakespeare with another playwright of his time who is working in a different tradition or simply making room if, you know, there is one slot that year for a classical play for thinking about, uh, you know, again, a parallel tradition.
So it, it's really been quite transformative for me. Um, it, it started a little bit because of this work of trying to move the festival into a virtual version. And, you know, so first I was just watching a lot of things just in my capacity as a, um, you know, a lover of theater. And then I moved into um, exploring the work that these companies were doing in Spain. Um, and um, there really came a point where it just seemed like it was burgeoning and there were so many interesting questions being raised by the attempts to move theater onto these digital formats. I've been very cheered in the middle of so much that is really dire and grim for the performing arts in the pandemic um, by the, the thinking around um, access and affordability and collaboration across geographical distances, right? All the things that um, theater on Zoom makes available. So we actually have two plays on Sor Juana, and uh, and they're very they're very different. Um, one is um, uh, this a Mexican company um, uh, that actually that is a play that uh, existed in in an, in real life version, and that they've moved on to on to Zoom, and it's more. Um, uh, a dialogue among contemporary actors about what it means to inhabit Sor Juana. Um, the other, which is uh, a Zoom native uh, piece, is um, a sort of meditation on what uh, being away from the world means, particularly for female creators. And so it's a, uh, this is a, a very exciting um, young company in Spain named Grumelot, um, and they do devised work and they, um, they also train young, act young actors and they ended up with a class that was entirely uh, female actors and they decided that they wanted to work on Sor Juana. And then when the pandemic hit, they had them keeping, keeping diaries and reflecting on their experience. And so um, they are weaving in uh, the text of Sor Juana with this um, very poetic use of Zoom. Two very different pieces. It's all happening on the weekend of, you know, Sor Juana's birthday, traditionally as it's celebrated. We didn't, we didn't really set out to have gender at the center of our festival, but that is a guiding principle in our choice of text for translation. So the closing piece is also sort of strong women front and center because um, the Red Bull reading is of a play uh, by a female playwright from the 1630s by Ana Caro who writes um, a sort of talking back to Don Juan play um, called The Courage to Write a Woman's Wrongs, um, in which she imagines a woman who sort of follows her Don Juan to, uh, to uh, make things right, so. Este 12 de noviembre.